We've been, if you haven't figured it out yet, doing a lot of live view uh, lately and trying to see whether it's ready for more ambitious applications. And the answer is, it very much seems to be, and it's proving quite delightful to work with. So um, who's, I don't know how I get the answer with, who's played with live view recently? Stick your hand up. Like who's seen function components in action? I don't see a lot of hands. So I'll do like, a. will start at the beginning with sort of function components. Um, and also, in fact, I'll start even before that. This was the Tailwind standalone that I was talking about earlier. And it is the best article for installing Tailwind while it still isn't baked in. And they're saying that the new Phoenix project generator will add Tailwind support shortly. So I'm looking forward to this new world of ES builds and standalone Tailwinds. But yeah, look, that stuff's working really well. It's a pretty simple install. Do a couple of things and it's it's great. So check that out. I've posted the link way back, but I can post it again now. So you can check it out. Let's take a look at that. Um, and if you haven't checked out Tailwind, I would recommend it. It's very productive. So yeah, we've been looking at a couple of different applications that we want to use Live View for because it's been you know a while and things have changed recently in Live View. Um, you know, we, we had Live Views before, and then we've got Live Components and Function Components, and they've taken a lot of the ideas that I've been sort of side eyeing over in Surface, but haven't had a chance to have a play with, and a lot of those have been migrated over into Live View proper now. So the first of those ideas is function components. And they are, like they say on the tin, functions. And they're really simple. And um, we've got a new template thing called Heeks, which is slightly different. I think, you know, you can see here, it's just plain old HTML and we're dropping lots of Tailwind utility classes in there. We get an assigns with any stuff that we want in it. Um, in this case, rendering slots is sort of what a table is all about. So when we have a table, we want to render the children. The default slot is called in a block. So if you pass any children, you get that in a like a variable, an at variable called in a block. And then you just call render slot as to where you want to put it. So obviously constructing a table, we're just trying to put the children that we pass in inside the table. The table row, the table header, the table cell, etc. So we just render slot, render slot, render slot. Um, and this looks like sort of normal uh, leaks or EEX templating. It's just the same old stuff when you're dealing with, um, yeah, like poking holes in your template with the, whatever that syntax is, the, the normal EEX variable syntax. So that's the same. Now, the thing that is different in Heeks is that when you're in the attribute list, Heeks uses curly braces to you know, punch holes in the attribute list. So you basically do that and you can't do the EEX um, templating syntax this one. So you have to use the curlies. And so it makes it a little bit more nice to work with. It's different, but it's pretty pleasant to use. Um, this is how you call function components. So the dot may seem a little weird. And I was like, oh, what is this weird syntax? Um, but it makes sense. You can call a module dot a function, but if it's available to you in the local module, then you can just leave the module off and you get dot table. So it's pretty clear what your function components are um, and they're differentiated from anything else. And so if you want to call something from somewhere else, you can just do that. And so we did that for our hero icons. We're getting that from the pedal stack and we've just basically copied in stuff from pedal components and it's actually easier to just you know put this stuff in there and do it yourself and then you can style it how you want so these are all the pedal default styles but we can just go into here and change it to be how we want and it's got a nice set of icons from hero and it's all set up for us so um the render here is the live component 
So I might get to that in a little bit. Why don't we have a look at how this works? So a filter rule, sortable data grid sort of needs sorting. So we've got an example here. So we want to be able to sort those rows. So there we are sorting them and then unsorting them. Here we are sorting them. And we can also do a filter as well. So we can go install. And so that's all live. And you can see that here we've got little badges. Um, and that is effectively custom cell rendering, which is kind of cool. So let me just dive out to where we're calling this from to see how this is actually working. So we've got the two data grids here. We mount it with a live component like this. We pass it the module of the, of the live component, give it an ID just so it can reference things and know which one it is and they have to be unique within the page. That doesn't automatically become the DOM ID, which is a little bit strange. I haven't quite figured that out. Then we pass in any data that we want to initialize. Um, and this is probably the neatest trick is that we can assemble, um, I guess, named slots. So here we've got coal and there's multiple of them. And what this is doing is basically assembling a collection of coals where we say, here's the item that we get as an argument and we'll show you where we call that later and we can render it how we want. So I've got customized string rendering here if I want it. And we use that for making the badges look like badges. So we take the data and then look up a map up here to see what kind of color we're gonna get for the badge. And then we can pass in the label. So that gives us a lot of power and flexibility just by using um, multiple named slots. Not only can we take the argument for the specific rendering, so you can think of these as just templates for each cell. We can also then give it the ID so that we can sort it and filter it, and we can give it the label for the column header. So that all gets passed through to here. Um, it doesn't look like much, but that is a super powerful feature to give us custom like configuration completely outside the data grid. And so what we do in there, I'm just gonna to skip to the sort of the middle of this is we get those coals as a collection called coal. It's a little bit weird because it's not plural, but it's named after the, the name slot. And we can go through those and we can say, set up our events. So that's the toggle sort. And we put the label in there. And I guess we could have custom rendering as well if we had separate things, but we're just using the string there. And then we use the call ID to take the event for what sort order we want. So it'll do the sort order basically um, for that field. So um, that is pretty neat. I'll talk about the multi-select in a minute, but all we're doing in the middle of this is going over the modified rows, which is the sorted and filtered version of those rows, and then looping over each column in our named slot um, collection. And then we're basically calling render slot with the column, which gives us the named slot over here. And we pass up the argument. So with that little idea, we've got totally custom rendering defined outside of the template. And so, yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat. And it's not a lot of code. So we've sort of got our function components down here, which sort of represent how we style things and how we turn that into sort of style DOM. We can give that to as a designer and get them to do all the tailwind and make it part of our design theme. So above this is where the live component sort of is, because we could outboard those um, function components into another module and just refer to them outside or import them if you like. And then up here, the live component does all of our state management and event handling. So we've got toggle rows and removing things in and out of selected IDs, doing select all so we can select all, or we can individually select things. Um, we can also do this, which is if we filter, 
and select all. We only select the things that were selected, which is kind of nice. Because all we do is apply the selection on the modified rows, which is the filtered and sorted ones. Um, yeah, and there's not much to it. It's pretty straightforward. A little bit of state management in terms of just um, lazy initializing things. Um, this is sort of a neat trick if you want to do a lazy initialize. So assign new will only work if you don't have those things defined. So there's lazy, lazy initialization going on there. And we always filter the rows based on what's been passed in and set up elsewhere. And then the rest of it is all just sorting and filtering and nothing really special. And that can probably live somewhere else. But yeah, it's pretty neat, not a lot of code, um, pretty easy to work with. And it sort of surprised me how easy it was to build a pretty ambitious sort of data grid from scratch, um, leaning a little bit on pedal, um, but otherwise very pleasant to work with. And I think we knocked most of that up in an afternoon and Theo and I added multi-select to that this afternoon and it was really easy to sort of modify. So that's all I've got. Any questions? I don't hear any. All right. Thanks all.